Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the half-life of a particular object or element. Well, what is a half-life? Well, a half-life is described up here as being it's the amount of time it takes an element to decay to be half of the original amount. And for these problems, we're going to be using the form that we've been doing with exponential models, a times b to some exponent. And actually, the way the book describes this, they make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So it's a good thing you're watching this video because the way the book is, if you try to rely on the book to show you how to do this, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So you want to make sure that you take careful notes uh, so in that way you don't have to flip back or turn back to this video. Uh, because like I said, if you try to go back to the book to learn how to do this, they'll show you a slightly different method, which will still get to the correct answer, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated their way. So let's take now and look at this next story problem. It's a real world example where we're going to be doing a little bit of CSI work to figure out the solution to the problem. So let's look at that example now. So here it says in 2007 the element polonium was in the news when London police detectives investigated the poisoning of former Russian KGB agent Alexander Lichvenenko. Since polonium had never been known to be used in a poisoning, the authorities did not look for evidence of it until weeks after the crime had taken place. As a consequence, they had to work backwards from the evidence of, uh, to calculate the amount of polonium used on the victim. They made use of the fact that the half-life of polonium is 138 days. Now that piece there is important to make sure that you remember that. Um, but then it says detectives in the Lichvenenko investigation found polonium on a cup in a hotel that he had visited. Suppose that four micrograms were found, and it had been 30 days since Lichvenenko was there. So we're going to figure out how much polonium was on the cup originally. Now one of the things that they don't uh, tell us in the book is they don't give us this formula. This formula is how we're going to be able to find out the initial amount, or be able to, anytime we work with half-lives, we're going to want to work with this formula. Now you can see it's still an exponential equation. It's in the form y equals a times b to some exponent. It's just that instead of having b as being a different uh, growth value, we're going to always use, anytime we work with half-lives, we're going to start out by using your value for b as one half. And your exponent, let's talk about that. Instead of a single value in your exponent, your exponent's going to be a ratio, it's going to be a fraction, where the numerator is going to be whatever the time is. In this case, it's been 30 days since he had been there, so it's been 30, your time is 30 days, and is representing the number of half life or the number of years in one half-life, or days in this case. It could also be days, it could be years. Uh, so that's going to be what goes in our denominator. Now y in this situation is going to represent your total amount after a period of time. So when they say that 4 micrograms were found, that is not the initial amount. 4 micrograms is how much was left after 30 days. So we're going to put the 4 in for y. We're trying to figure out our initial value. Our value for b we start out with as 1 half. And now we're going to take, and for our exponent, it's going to end up being 30 divided by the 138 days in 1 half life. So that means for polonium, every 138 days, it's decaying to be half of what it was originally. So now we're going to simplify this. If I simplify 0.5 or 1 half and have an exponent of 30 divided by 138, I get an answer for just that piece of 0.8601. So I'd have the equation 4 equals a times 0.8601. And if I divide both sides by 0.8601, I'm going to get my value for um, a, which ends up being 4.65. So we would say it's 4.65 micrograms is how much was present initially. Um, after the course of the or after the course of 30 days there that's how much was present initially now it says derive a model for the situation so we know now our initial value so instead of using what we had as 4 and the 30 we're not going to use that right now so our equation would be y equals your initial amount 4.65 our value for b for right now is going to be 1 half our exponent's going to be t divided by, and for polonium, like we said, every your half-life is 138 days. So we're going to have t divided by, whoops, 138. Now, a better way to simplify this is to think about what it means as a fractional exponent. 
So this would be the same as an exponent of 1 divided by 138 times t. So what I could do is I could simplify this piece because I can't take the 4.65 times the 1 half to the 138th power because of that t is a variable that will stop me from being able to simplify that further. But I can simplify the 1 half to the 1 to the 38th or 1 half to having an exponent of 1 divided by 138. So when you simplify that, we get 0.995. So I could write my equation then as y equals my initial amount of 4.65 times 0.995 to an exponent of t. So what I could do is if I knew now that I wanted to figure out how much uh, would be left after 30 days, I could put 30 in here for t, and it would give me approximately 4 as my answer. So that would be one way that we could work with half-lives, where we're trying to find the initial value. So again, the way that we would do that, if we're trying to find the initial amount, we put in what we would have after a certain amount of time, put that in for y, use your value for the uh, half-life, whether it's in years, you know, however, many, however long the half-life is, is in your denominator. And in the numerator is how much time has already gone by. So it's 30 days. In this case, we'd have 30 divided by 138 as your exponent. And your base for these will always start out as 1 half. Simplify that, divide on both sides, and we get your initial amount of 4.65, and use that to come up with the equation like we just did. So let's look at another example together. This one here, it says a certain substance has a half-life of 24 years. So here, every 24 years, it's becoming half of what we had originally. If a sample of 80 grams is being observed, how much will remain in 50 years? So we're going to start out with our equation. So our equation, remember, is A times 1 half, where it's going to be T divided by the number of half, how long a half-life is. In this case, it's 24. So I'm going to plug in my other information. This time, we know that we had a sample of 80 grams is being observed. So that's your initial amount. That's our value for A. We want to figure out how much remain in 50 years. So 50 would be our value for t. So I would have to figure out what y is just plug in 80 in for a and put 50 in for t. And if you just plug that in on your calculator, you're going to get your answer of approximately 18.88 grams. And that is a lot easier than the way the book would have you do it. So there you have it. So between the three videos for this uh, uh, section, we would have looked at how to find the exponential model by working with the story problem. We saw how to do it with a graphing calculator. And now we have looked at how to use exponential equations for half-lives. So you should now be able to successfully complete your assignment. So with that, good luck.